everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to Around the Peninsula. Today we are going to visit the South Bay City's Council of Governments brand new headquarters here in Torrance. This agency known as the South Bay COG represents 16 South Bay cities including Rancho Palos Verdes. In fact, the executive director is a former mayor of RPV. We're going to meet with her and her team along with RPV City Councilman John Cruikshank to find out more about the mission of the South Bay COG and its latest program launched to deal with affordable housing. Welcome to our offices. I'm Jackie Backrack and I am the Executive Director of the South Bay City's Council of Governments. The City of Rancho Palos Verdes is one of our members. We have 16 members going from the uh, Port of Los Angeles all the way to LAX. And those cities start at El Segundo and Inglewood and end with the Palos Verdes Peninsula and San Pedro. We, um, we're, we've been an organization since the early 70s when we were co called the South Bay Cities Association. In 1994, we became what's called Joint Powers Authority, an official government agency, but we're a voluntary agency, so our members don't have to uh, do anything we say, and we just look for consensus and work together on city issues that span the borders of our cities in the South Bay. South Bay COG was created in order to, uh, basically to, on transportation issues. Because when you're in a city, you don't know what city you're in as you're driving down a road. And so they got together to talk about transportation. And over time, uh, we have taken on a lot more responsibility. And that really is our mission. Our mission is to work together with all the cities to do better together what they can do than what they can do separately. We try to add value to city staff so that we're not a burden, but we're actually a help. And we work on a lot of different issues dealing with um, transportation now, homeless senior issues. We work on sustainability, climate action planning, and now we have our award-winning South Bay Fiber Network. So we're doing all kinds of things. What we try to do for cities is a lot of their advanced planning. We try to look ahead and see what cities might face in the future so that we can work together to prepare. And the other thing that I think is so great about our organization is we bring in uh, experts so that we can learn from each other and learn from experts on best practices and lessons learned in both the South Bay and other places so that we can do the most efficient and effective government and provide the best services to our members. My role on the South Bay City Council of Governments, South Bay COG as we call it, um, is as the second vice president and actually I started, uh, when I started my term on the city council, I was intrigued by the South Bay COG and the reason was is because it actually is a group that encompasses the entire South Bay, El Segundo, where I was born and raised and migrated south all the way down through the peninsula. So it's a neat group and it also includes Inglewood, Hawthorne, Gardena and some of our, our neighbors to the northeast. So um, knowing that that group had a lot of influence, I was intrigued and so my role, uh, not only am I on the steering committee which meets monthly but also on the board, I represent the city of Rancho Palos Verdes on the group and because we cover a wide range of different topics, um, I'm able to interject and to give the opinion of our residents in our city to this group and actually get some good feedback on what's going on in the other group, uh, cities as well. My name is Grace Farwell and I am a senior project manager with the South Bay Cities Council of Governments. I've actually been here for 12 years now and I've had a variety of different roles within the organization. Um, from energy, working on the energy efficiency projects to um, our water projects to doing outreach out in the community. and But I have found my niche, and that is uh, working with issues related to homelessness and then also seniors. I'm here today to talk about our newest pilot program, which is called HomeShare South Bay. And I'd like to back up just a little bit to talk about how this program came about. And our um, Council of Governments received funding from uh, the County of Los Angeles through Measure H Innovation Funds. And from those funds, we actually have um, put together four or five different programs that have a region-wide basis. And so one of them is HomeShare South Bay. We've also developed an education and training module, an introduction to homelessness for city staff, um, as well as elected officials and other, you know, the business community, um, et cetera, because we want to make sure that people kind of dispel the myths of what homeless, what people perceive to be homelessness. 
Um, it's not just the person that we see on the street. There are many other backstories, and that's a lot of what our HomeShare South Bay program is really focused on because it's a prevention program, and we want to prevent people from falling into homelessness. We also are looking to work with one of our cities to develop a safe parking program, and that would allow an individual who doesn't have housing but is staying in their vehicle to have a safe place to park at night. Um, and a number of people who are in safe parking programs, they could be going to school, they could be working, you know, they just don't have, you know, they, they've been hit with some type of, um, uh, could be a catastrophic issue, they could have had a job loss, uh, they could have lost their housing because they, you know, the rents are so high, uh, especially here in the South Bay, and so it has found them staying in their car. We also have a client aid program, so we're working with cities and right now, because of COVID and a lot of people losing their jobs or cut back on hours, we have funding available to, for rental assistance. And even though a number of our cities and the county of LA have rental assistance programs, this is really for people who don't qualify for any of those other types of programs. So that's, that's kind of the, the, the different buckets where our innovation funds went, but I'm here today to talk about HomeShare South Bay and this has been something that we've been looking at for a number of years. And I think it kind of grew out of our senior services working group. And it's um, so th with this program, we're trying to match uh, an older, well, a homeowner, potentially an older adult, and especially on the um, in the Palos Verdes Peninsula cities, because we know that at least 25 percent of the population of those four cities is 65 years of age and older. Uh, they may have, um, you know, they may be living on a fixed income, uh, you know, their spouse may have passed away, they may have extra rooms. Some of the homes are quite large in the, in the Palos Verdes Peninsula area. Um, and, and people could be looking for companionship. And so with this program, we're trying to match a homeowner or a home provider with a home seeker. And that person could be somebody on the verge of losing their housing. They could have been recently homeless because of some of the, um, uh, you know, because of a job loss and they could be potentially even staying in their car or even couch surfing on somebody's, uh, you know, living on somebody's couch. So we're really trying to match people um, through this program. And so, as I mentioned, we've been looking at it for quite a while and we've researched other programs because there's, um, in Los Angeles, there's the Affordable Living for Aging program and they do, you know, they, they are matching people and they're countywide um, but it's one person basically doing all that. And then we were looking at um, Silvernest. And Silvernest started, I, I believe the program is about five years old now, and they're, they're nationwide. Um, and so we started working with them. And the things that we really like about Silvernest is it's an online platform. They provide all kinds of resources and services to both the home seeker as well as the home provider. Behind me, I actually have our landing page up, our HomeShare South Bay, which is silvernest.com forward slash South Bay. And so somebody would, would go on to the landing page and where it says get started, they would actually develop a profile. And so they can put in information about, um, you know, kind of their likes and dislikes. If it's a homeowner, they can put in uh, the fact that there may be a bedroom and a bathroom that's available and other common areas that are available. And so they just kind of put in all that information. And then conversely, a home seeker is doing the exact same thing. They're putting in what they're looking for in a housemate situation and, you know, whether or not they have a pet, um, you know, whether they're, you know, just the different things that they like to do. Um, and then the nice thing about Silvernest is all this information is in, and it's very um, private. It's, it's not shared with anybody else. Um, if there are potential matches with the silver, using the Silvernest algorithm, then both parties are informed of potential matches. And then there's a way that they can private message one another. Currently, the way Silvernest works is you know after you build your profile and then you start the talking, um, they also have uh, a lease creator. So you can create, you know, they, they start with the California standard lease and then you can customize it however you want. They also have um, uh, 
automated rent payments. So then you don't have to worry about handing cash or a check to the homeowner every month. You automatically set it up out of your, um, your account and then it goes into the, you know, the homeowner's account. They also provide um, insurance. Homeowners can get up to $100,000 if, you know, heaven forbid there's any damage caused by their home seeker. And conversely, the home seeker or the tenant uh, can have up to $10,000 and no deductible for their belongings if something happens to their belongings while they're part of this um, home share, you know, part of the match. Mm -hmm. And so we really like th those aspects of it because that's a lot of work from, um, you know, for one person or a couple of people to be able to actually do. And so that's one of the reasons that we went with um, Silvernest. And then also through our innovation funds, since this is a pilot program, so what, what happens is after a match is made and rent is being collected, then the homeowner is charged 5% as a membership fee of whatever the rent is. So let's say the rent is $500. So 5% of that would be $25. So $25 a month would be diverted from you know, the homeowner into um, Silvernest. But you get all these great services in the meantime. Um, and if you know, the match for whatever reason doesn't work out, then you can still go back and try to find another match. So that's, those, are, those are the things that we really liked about the program. So with our pilot program, we have funding available to pay for up to 15 homeowners for a six month membership period. And then also um, it's really important, we feel for background checks to happen. And so we also through our pilot program, we will pay for up to 90 background checks of both the home seeker as well as the home provider. So those are some of the, the benefits also of uh, working and going through HomeShare South Bay. At this point, we do have eight homeowners or home providers because there, we have a couple people who are uh, renters in like condos or whatever, and they can also participate. You don't absolutely have to be a homeowner. Um, but you need to make sure that you can sublease when you, you know, if you have a lease. Um, and so we have eight homeowners or home providers signed up right now, and we have 50 home seekers, which, you know, is to be expected that we're going to have many more home seekers than we will uh, for homeowners. And so we really, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we really want to try to find, um, you know, build our base of, um, of, ho of homes that are available. So they can go to silvernest.com forward slash South Bay. So I think we have 25% of our population are senior population. And so I'm sure there's going to be several seniors out there that are going to love this program. I hope they watch this, uh, your half hour special on this and uh, reach out to the South Bay COG and, and find a roommate for themselves. We're going to be monitoring the program, of course, but Grace and her team are going to be vetting the people and it's going to be safe. And, and it, like you said, gives them some extra companionship, maybe a couple extra bucks in their pocket. And so I, I, I'm hopeful, very hopeful for the program. Home Share South Bay is a, and it's a program that addresses prevention. It says that if you have a big house and you have a room that you would like to, to share, uh, that to get some rent or maybe somebody could do uh, household chores or just be there for safety purposes, um, you might want to find somebody that could use a home that, that is in jeopardy of being homeless, that is, a, a, you know, a, somebody that could help you out. And so Home Share South Bay is a, is a, organ, it's a program that will place people together. We have a, um, we're working with Silvernest, and I, you'll get into this probably more later, but you're, we're working with a company that vets people so that you're not picking a stranger that has COVID protections, that does all the contracts, that does all of the, um, you know, um, matching up. And we would, we think that there are a lot of people that, um, like myself, who've lived in the area for a really long time, that might have a lot of room in their home that might want to share it with somebody. And it'll help aging in place for the people that live here, and it'll help people that are just in need of a home. You served on the city council for 13 years. You were mayor three times, yes. so thank you for that service. Tell us how that experience probably brought you into this position, how you're able to really be an advocate for our cities. Well, it's, I think it's, I feel like a kid in a candy store, so it's great. Um, when I was on the RPV City Council, I actually was president of something called the South Bay Cities Association, which was the 
precursor to this organization. I believe very strongly in regionalism, and, and I think, I always tell the story that we had a, um, a request for a letter of support for something on the 405 freeway. And the first city to answer that request was Rancho Palos Verdes, because you can't live in Rancho Palos Verdes unless the rest of the South Bay works. And so that's what I think the power of our organization is. We make sure that you can get through Torrance, and you can get to El Segundo, and you can do all of those things, because we're working together with the cities. And that's what I learned being on the council in RPV, and that's what I try to bring to the South Bay City's Council of Governments. And when I write a report for our board members, I write it the way I think an elected official would want to read it with the information they would need to know to make the decisions they need to make. Can you expand also on that award-winning program that dealt with the fiber network? I know I think you connected all the 16 cities that are in the COG. Just ex share a little bit more about that. I would love to. <laughs> We're very excited about this. Um, about four years ago, we found, uh, we were concerned that a lot of businesses were moving south from Santa Monica and Playa Vista, and they were high-tech businesses, the Googles of the world. And we said, you know, the South Bay doesn't have the fiber to actually be able to attract those businesses. So we worked with something called the South Bay Workforce Investment Board to get money to, to do a study to find out what fiber was available in the South Bay. And we essentially found out there wasn't enough to do anything with. So the next step, we, we issued a request for proposal, and we got private proposers to come in and tell us what they could do for us. And what we found out is our cities were paying, on average, $4,000 a month for less than a gigabit of service, which is not very much service. And with our proposal and with our successful bidder, we are now having all of our city halls paying $1,000 a month for one gigabit of service. So we saved our cities a lot of money every single month, and they've got much better service than they had before. And we've created a ring that connects all of them and laterals off to the city halls. Uh, the one thing we did, which is what makes it so incredibly unique, is we get uh, Measure M money from Metro, and, and that's transportation money that comes to our subregion. We get about $250 million every five years or something like that, and we needed about seven, six point nine million to build this fiber. And so we went to Metro and we asked them for this money, which is essentially our money, and initially they said no, but South Bay COG does not do very well with no. So we went back and we fought and we were able to get our money. Uh, that meant that the build out of this entire system to every single city was free. So not only did we get them connected to fiber for free, but we lowered their monthly costs a substantial amount. Um, so recently, uh, the South Bay COG installed uh, what they call a dark fiber network, which really is a fiber optic network that uh, connected every one of the city halls for all the cities within the South Bay. And so right off the bat, you're getting this flow of information through to all the different cities. And from there, you're able to uh, share information, uh, host meetings, do things m at a much more cost-effective rate for our city. So that benefits our city right there. Um, also, the uh, group is involved with major transportation issues. Uh, South Bay COG represents us with Metro. As we know, Metro is the one that is responsible for much of the planning within our uh, LA County, um, not just the heavy transit and rail, but also the bus lines and that. So we rely on that and that entire network. So the group actually is involved with everything from transportation to homeless to fiber optics to just go good governments governance um, and also one, one thing that uh, they do advocate for is local control and I know our residents are very concerned about what's going on in Sacramento and all these housing bills and so the South Bay COG as a whole has a much stronger voice than just our city alone so they're able to represent us to say hey enough's enough we like local control we need to we need to stop and put the brakes on a bit and mm -hmm. make sure that the legislation that's happening is going to benefit us, not just force us into a corner where we don't have the housing and we, don't, we can't do the things that they want us to do. The other thing we've done, which I think is um, trying to help our cities, is we've written climate action plans for every one of our cities so that they are ready for uh, sustainable actions and understand their greenhouse gas emissions and understand where they're going, what kind of energy usage they have so that then we can help them um, reduce that. We've also done something called vulnerability assessments for each of our cities, which tell them, like for example, RPV has 
wildfire vulnerability. So we've done uh, reports and these reports, they sound like they could go up on the shelf, but it turns out that the state of California will ask a city, do you have those reports in order to get a grant or in order to qualify for something? So all of our cities have those reports because we've written them for them. We are officially a government agency. We get our funding from dues, uh, but that's only like 10 or 11% of our funding. We've been extremely aggressive in getting grant funding. And uh, something's happened over the years, which has been fantastic. And what's happened over the years is LA County, Metro, um, and other agencies realize, SCAG, realize that they don't want to deal with all the cities in LA County. It's 88 cities. So if they can deal with the councils of government, we take 16 cities off their plate and we can do it for them. So we get money from the county for homeless services. We get money from Metro for transportation. We get, um, and, and we get different kinds of uh, services that we supply to our cities. Then we've been extremely aggressive in creating something we call the South Bay Environmental Services Center. And we do a lot of energy efficiency for our cities. We've gotten money in the past from Southern California Edison, but now we're getting it from something called the Regional Energy Network, which is a uh, out, out uh, post of the county. And we also get money from the gas company, from West Basin Municipal Water District, from Water Replenishment District, and, and, um, and from LADWP, we get money from Metro and the sanitation districts. All of those things allow us to do a lot of, you might have seen us in the street, at, at Whale of a Day, we have a table there, and we bring information to our residents. We do rain barrel distribution. We also um, have food waste programs, ocean-friendly gardening programs that we sponsor along with West Basin Municipal Water District. And so we have a very strong environmental program, and we help our cities save energy by auditing their energy use and then helping them um, get rebates and other funds to make their improvements. As many probably know, city council members are assigned to different agencies and groups like the sanitation district and that. Um, the South Bay COG uh, is one of those. It is a government agency. It actually has the power and ability to assign people to other boards like the Metro Service Board and others that affect all of our daily lives. And so um, because of that, we have an opportunity in our city to represent Rancho Palos Verdes and really represent the peninsula area because all four cities, uh, let's face it, we all really face the same issues. And so we have an opportunity to do that. And one thing that uh, we are trying to do through the South Bay COG uh, because they do help us with a number of grants, transportation grants, and other type of funding opportunities, is there's an opportunity through them as a federal grant to actually create a more of a virtual town hall type, and we're going to think we're looking at Western Avenue to maybe have an office to where residents on that side of the peninsula have can go and go to City Hall but not go to City Hall. In other words, they go to this office and everything that would be available to you if you went to our City Halls there, but not just our City Hall, but LA County offices, federal offices, all through a one-stop shop. So we're gonna come up with something where people don't necessarily have to drive somewhere far to get all the access they need to whatever it is uh, within our government, federal all the way down to local. One of the things that we do that, that I think is important to our cities is uh, if there's a special issue that comes up and they really want to know more about it. We'll bring in experts. So for two years, uh, we had a coyote management task force, and we brought in uh, experts from the state and others and tried to help cities figure out how to address coyotes. We brought in, for, we had another task force that lasted about two years, and it was for short-term rentals. What do you do about people that are renting their houses and, and what's the city role in all of that? So instead of our cities have to learn all these things individually, we, we do it together and we share and we do best practices. One of the things about my job I also like is that every month I meet with all of the city managers. I meet every other month with all of the planning directors, all the park directors. So we constantly know what's going on and we, and we bring them together. The Council of Governments does this so that they can share lessons. So at the last meeting of the park directors, they talked about what are we going to do for 4th of July this year? And the city managers are talking about how are you opening up your city? So we provide that forum so that our cities can really work together and share best practices. And that'll do it for this edition of Around the Peninsula. We hope you've enjoyed learning about the South Bay City's Council of Governments and all the great programs they offer. Again, thanks for joining us. See you next time on Around the Peninsula.